What's going on guys? My name is Hussein and it's time to update your Node.js uh, implementation if you have a Node.js environment that is exposed to the public. Let's go through the January 4th security releases 2021 that the Node.js team has released. And uh, so a summary of these uh, updates. What happened here? These are some of them are high vulnerabilities that can cause denial of service and guys if you don't know denial of service attacks can be caused by actually someone having a fleet of zombie machines that can they can control and then hit your node.js implementation in order to bring it down but there are other ways to cause denial of server that are way easier one of the which is if i can do a slow lotus attack on you by slowly consuming your memory and making you think i am a very slow client or the other part that is very very common is to find a vulnerability in node.js or any web server that could crash the server based on a specific payload and if i send that payload to you and i can crash your server guess what you're not available and if i can easily even if i am a simple mobile phone that I can crash your server, I just made you unavailable. So let's go through these things. So the first one is regarding to their TLS implementation, a use after free bug. And if you don't know, guys, uh, especially when in, in, in um, implementations that ha don't have garbage collection, like a Rust or a C++ or C, where you point to a specific, you have pointer pointing to a specific memory, and if you free up this memory and there is a still pointer to that memory and you start, you want to use that pointer, that server will crash because, hey, it's a memory leading, it's a corrupt memory, essentially. So that causes essentially a crash. If you cause a crash, server goes down and no matter how fast you can spin it up, if I can keep sending this stuff, I can crash you all the time. So a TLS wrap uh, implementation specific. So if you are exposing your Node.js as HTTPS server, or uh, any other implementation, TLS implementation, like you built your own protocol on top of TLS, right? So that's the first one. Uh, I'm gonna jump uh, the HTTP request smuggling for now because it's a low and I'm gonna talk about that why. The other one is an open SSL, kind of a similar security pattern, a null pointer dereference. So once you dereference the pointer, same exact scenario, right? You dereference the pointer, but you still have the pointer then if you try to access the null pointer, it fails, right? And crashes the server. If it cra the server crashes, you don't have access to that cause denial of service. So that's the second one. So if I talk about the HTTP Rex works cycling, which it is a very consistent pattern. I'm gonna reference the old video that I talked about right here. Their November, I believe, uh, uh, press release, there was another HTTP request smuggling. And what is this HTTP request smuggling, you might say? I talked about that uh, in this video right here. But essentially, in a nutshell, especially in HTTP 1.1, it doesn't happen in other HTTPs. It, it does, but it's very hard to do. The idea of HTTP, and let, let's just go through this and quickly explain this to you, why not, is to send a, 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 a well-crafted post on Git message with to a duplicate header that identifies the link of the, of the request. Because how does HTTP 1.1 know when to stop reading the body? How does it know? It, there is two things, content length and transfer encoding, I believe. So based on that and this new line, it knows that, oh, I have a content length zero. That means there is a zero body. If there is a content length 44, I need to read 44 bytes after that, and here's my body. If you if you can't confuse the proxy and the web server, it has to happen in both. You cannot possibly do this in one. It's very, very hard, right? That's why it's, a, it's set as a low priority, uh, right? Because it's very, very difficult to do, right? Plus, it's it has a very niche special edge case, right? So if you can send multiple content link and the proxy picks one of them as the actual one and the web server picks the second one, then this actually happens, right? So the correct solution is why the heck do you accept a request that has two content links, right? This is an invalid request and you should 
immediately just stop it, right? So this particular bug, in this case, has two transfer encoding headers, and just by using HTTP 1.1 and essentially having a proxy that picks one of the, essentially a vulnerable proxy, and having the Node.js as the web server, you can run into it. Very, very highly unlikely, in my opinion. Very highly unlikely. Plus, people have firewalls in place that blocks this kind of thing. So, HTTP 2 cannot run into this because it's not as dumb as HTTP 1.1 where we actually do string parsing to know where is the first request or where is the second request starts or where is the third request. Well, no, we have a specific uh, protocol in HTTP 2 where there's streams and this is a stream has a single request. You cannot have multiple requests in a, in a single stream. And headers are sent in a completely different stream, so it's almost impossible to run HTTP 2. I take that back because someone, a smart security engineer, actually managed to do an HTTP2 smuggling attack. If you're interested, I'm going to reference the video here. But that said, that's it for the video. We gave a very quick video. So if you have Node.js exposed to the public, it's, it's worth updating into the latest. Uh, and if you have like version 10 and above, go ahead and update it to the latest because just because of these DNS uh, the uh, denial of service attacks, right? Because of these things. I'm not really worried much about the HTTP request. Something I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about much about that. But guys, uh, I'm gonna see you on the next one. A very quick video, and uh, stay awesome. Goodbye.